All right, welcome in everybody. Welcome to Thursday's Kids Club. We're going to be painting rocks today, right Zoe? Yeah. Yes, and we have some special guests here, Zoe's cousins, Jacob and Kaysen. So wave at Jacob and Kaysen. Hey guys, we're happy you're here today. We're gonna paint rocks together. <laughs> all right, let's see, they got their rocks all ready. All right. All right, so let's take a quick look at all the supplies we'll need today. Today's pretty simple. Uh, it may not look simple to look at my desktop here, um, but really all we need are some rocks and some paint and some paint brushes. So paint, painting rocks is one of the easiest, coolest things we like to do. So we're really happy that you guys have joined us today. So the paint that I have um, today is our Creatology paint. It's the little paint pouch. You can pick them up at the Michael store. Uh, you can use the Crayola paint that was on the project. Uh, so if you bought your supplies online, those are okay too. Uh, there's a CraftSmart paint that you can get. Uh, paint is, and everybody wants to paint these days, so sometimes it's hard to find paint. The nice thing about rock painting, it's pretty easy to use almost any kind of paint um, to paint rocks. So, the big thing is making sure that you wash them and let them dry before you use them. So if you're picking them up outside, like this is an outside rock, you want to make sure it's all nice and clean before you start. Uh, let's see, this is a rock. You can see it's nice and shiny. This one can be kind of difficult. So if you have shiny rocks, it may take a couple of coats. So my little ghost here, I did two coats of white on the ghost. But some of these, if they don't have the wax coat like this, it's not shiny. These will take the paint pretty well. So just depends on your paint and your rock. And then I also have just some water for rinsing off of brushes, paper towels, and um, a paint palette so that we can pour out some paint. All right, so I believe we have dropped the project in the chat. So if you aren't sure where to find the project or the supplies, you can check out the link in the chat, or we will be dropping it in the chat soon. I don't see it yet, but we'll drop it in there for you. And then um, you can ask your questions in the Q&A. Do we have any questions so far, Raina? We do not have any questions so far. We just have people who are very excited for today and they're saying hi. Awesome, okay, so let's get started painting. So Zoe, yeah. which rock do you want to start with? You want to start with this one okay yeah, so great. you guys make sure we're painting i'm sure on somebody's table probably mom's table make sure you have a piece of paper down to cover up the table so you don't get paint on the table i would not want any scary notes from mom about how you got paint on her table do you want any scary notes no. all right all right, so what color would you like? Pink. Pink. I mean black first. Black first. Okay, you got black and white right here. Okay. I've already set you up and then I'll get you some pink so you can get started. Pink right here. Yep. So today's theme is fall painted rocks. So fall can be anything. It could be football, it could be uh, fall leaves, um, it could be ghosts and anything, pumpkin -y, hay bales. What about Frankenstein? It can be Frankenstein, absolutely. All right. Man, I got a really scary ghost here. I touched him before he was dry. Now he's got a crazy face. Okay. Oh, that's good. <laughs> All right, so what are you gonna paint, Zoe? Have Remember you decided? Pink spider. Pink spider, okay. So, um, one of the things that I was planning on do, showing you guys how to do is a pumpkin. Ah. So what I have here is just a, a rock that I've painted black um, to give a nice background. And then I'm going to pick my orange. And I'm going to share your palette. Is that okay? Yeah. Can you help me because I'm not supposed to like... Oh, it. you can put it down on the side that doesn't have paint on it, the other side. There you go. You only have to paint the one side. That's a little trick for you guys that, that don't want to paint the whole rock. So see, this is nice and black. I've painted the sides, but then look at the bottom. Oh, there's the normal color of the rock. 
So that way it can sit on that part of the rock since it's curved and it won't touch the bottom. So a little trick, if you wanna change the color of your rock. All right, so let's get started. And I just have some smaller brushes. I've got a couple that are broad so that if I'm painting a large part of the rock or all of the rock, I can use this broad brush here. Uh, otherwise, I tried to pick brushes that have a relatively small end um, since these rocks are kind of small. All right, so for my pumpkin, I'm gonna start with kind of a, a broad brush because I'm gonna paint a larger part of it. And I'm just going to do the outline of my pumpkin. And again, depending on what kind of paint you have will depend on how uh, many coats you have to put on. So don't worry if you have to do more than one coat, that's okay. If you're doing really thin layers, they'll dry pretty quickly anyway. So I'm just gonna put, I think I'm gonna make my pumpkin a little bit bigger. There we go. And then the other thing that I do that, you know, most of you probably have more than one rock sitting there at home. Um, what I do is I put my first coat on and then I move on to my next, uh, my next rock that I'm gonna paint. So I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna put a few, I'm just gonna put a little bit thicker coat on here and then I'm gonna let it dry. And then I'm gonna move to my next design while this one dries. Hey Jen. Yes ma'am. They want to know if you're using special paints. Special paint? Mm -hmm. I am not using special paint. But um, it's her favorite paint. That's true, Zoe. It is my favorite paint. Special the in that way then. That I'm using is definitely my favorite. Um, and this is, this is probably one of the thinner paints. If you think about in the world of paint, this is probably one that you, I will have to do more coats on, which is fine with me. Um, the Craft Smart paint, or you can buy Americana, um, Deco Art. There's a lot of these craft paints out there. Those tend to be a little bit thicker. And so you could probably get away with doing fewer coats if you're using one of those paints. But I know the Creatology and the, use your napkin, the Creatology and the, um, the Crayola brand paints uh, that are kids in the kid, found in the kids section. Those are definitely going to take a, a few more coats because they're typically a little bit thinner. And I wouldn't use watercolor unless that's the only thing you have because that'll take a whole lot of coats. Okay, all right. So the next one I'm going to do is, let's see, let me find my correct rock here. I'm gonna do a tree on this one, like a, a fall tree. So I'm gonna start with brown. I'm gonna do my trunk with brown here, let me pull it up. What are some of the designs, Raina, that everybody's doing? Can you, can you guys tell Raina in the Q&A what kind of uh, pictures you're painting on your rocks today? You can tell us in the Q&A or in the chat. Or in the chat. And uh, for the tree trunk, I'm gonna use a much smaller brush. Can you see it? A little bit, maybe a little closer. There we go. There you go. Put it against the background. So it's a much thinner because I'm gonna make the thin lines of the tree. So Sophie has already told us that she is making a sunflower. Oh, okay. We got Anna's making spiders and flowers. Someone's um, making a football, a heart, a cat pumpkins, teddy bears, a cow, a unicorn. Emma is making a leaf. Ooh, I like that. All right. I think Zoe's next one is going to be Frankenstein, she said. Ooh, that'll be good. My brain. Oh, is that your brain? Oh, yeah, my. That's my brain. Frankenstein's brain. Yeah. Some 
it's ready for Halloween over here. See? Oh, that's my favorite holiday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Someone is making a donut. I really want it to be Halloween. You really want it to be Halloween? Yeah, me too. What were you saying, Raina? Oh, someone is making a donut. Um, it looks like Aiden and Sai Sai are um, using paint pens and making oh. a heart with paw prints. I like that. Yeah, paint pens work too. Um, they don't have a whole lot. They have a few that are um, kid-friendly paint pens. So if you have those, um, those are good. Or if you're old enough to use the, the other ones, then those work really well too. Oh, okay, awesome. So you want to do your next rock? Yeah. You want to do your next rock? Yeah. Are you are you gonna do Frankenstein? Yeah, I just I need green. You need green? Okay, give me a yeah. second. All right. Yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm just putting down the trunk and the branches from my tree and laying them in with, again, a really thin brush. So unlike my pumpkin, I don't need broad strokes for this one. Zach is making Jack the Pumpkin King, if you like Nightmare Oh, Christmas. that is awesome. That's another really good one. I saw Somebody was making a, like a spooky house, mm -hmm. like a, you know, scraggly looking tree and so there's my, my tree on there and I'm going to let that dry just a little bit, rinse off my brush and stuff. Here, you need some green? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to make a uh, Frankenstein. All right. Here's your green. Can you rinse your brush? Brush off, please. What is this? Wait, can, you... can you rinse your brush off for me? Yeah. Thank you. That way um, it's nice and clean. And do you want a smaller brush? Are you Frankenstein? Okay. Brush. All right, that's fine. I'm going to fix my ghost. So I'm just going to let these guys dry for a little bit. So he's letting her, is this your spider, your pink spider? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really look like it. Yeah, spider. it's because you need to do some more coats still, I think. Yeah. Yeah, this, this paint, um, this paint definitely is going to need a little bit more than one coat. There we go. It looks a little bit. Yeah, I think ours is pretty Halloween themed over here. We've got pumpkins and... Brain Spiders, stuff. brain yeah. stuff. <laughs> All right, get started with your brains there. Okay. So, uh, for those of you guys that don't have rocks, uh, are, do we have anybody painting with us that didn't get rocks? I'm not seeing anybody yet, but I'm sure they would love the suggestion anyway. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's hard to find the right shape rock. Um, but if you if you find some really cool shaped rocks, it, it can help inspire like what you end up painting on the rock. So it doesn't always have to be a perfect rock. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be flat and round and exact. Um, I've got a really cool one right here that I just kind of set aside that I want to do something fun with. I haven't decided yet, but it's got, it's almost it's like three sided. That's really cool. So I, I'm going to I'm gonna do something fun with it, but sometimes a really funky looking rock um, turns out some really cool designs. You can you can almost look at the rock and let the rock tell you what it wants to be. All right, let me clean off my brushes here. Don't want to get muddy paint. And and. For those of you guys that want to do more than just paint, there's tons of things that you can do um, when you're painting rocks. You can use googly eyes. I usually make one of my rocks will have googly eyes on it. Um, in fact, if I wanted to make this a silly ghost instead of a scary ghost, you could put little googly eyes and suddenly he goes from being scary to kind of a silly ghost. So you can make pretty much anything silly with googly eyes. Look at my Frankenstein. Oh, I like your Frankenstein. Can I show it off? Yeah, it's like, not done yet. This is though. his his pink brains and his eyes. That you did a really good job on his eyes. Yeah. 
So Diane said that the funny rock would make a great watermelon slice. The what? I'm sorry. The, the funny shaped rock that you had oh, yeah. would make a great watermelon slice. You're right. That would be an awesome watermelon slice. Mama, what? can I have that one? I know I'm not. You want this one? The pink no, one? The, uh, that, oh, that, that, one. That, one's, that one's my watermelon slice, it sounds like. Yeah, but I want to make something else. Oh, you want to make something with it? Are you feeling inspired right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I'm going to set this one aside to dry, okay? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go back in on my pumpkin, and I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do the kind of the stem on it and then some little green curls. So for the stem, I'm going to use a smaller brush. And just put a little bit of brown here. And so I'm going to take some more orange and start to round out the top of the pumpkin. So like most things that you paint, it's completely adjustable. You don't like it, paint over it. Let it dry, paint over it. Wash it off sometimes. Some of this, actually this uh, creatology paint will wash off. So um, if you have plans to put your rocks outside, just know that if you don't put a coating on them uh, or if you don't use a, a weatherproof grade paint, um, your rock picture will run off. So I don't want anybody to be sad if they think they can stick these outside without a coating. I think some people use Mod Podge. Like oh, I mean, your football? Like, yeah. Oh, check it out. Here, hold it right up. Hold it up under here. Like this. You got a football. Oh, man. See, you were inspired. I like that. Um, but anyway, if you guys, you know, Let's say you have the same 12 rocks and you want to paint your rock different for each season. Uh, you can paint over them. I paint over rocks all the time. Um, I didn't do it with any of these because I had just come into a few new rocks that I hadn't painted on yet. Um, but in the past, I just paint over it all one color, whatever color I'm going to, you know, want for my base. And, and I just paint it again. So it's kind of nice that way. And there's also this thing that I guess a lot of people are doing where if they are leaving their rocks in parks and stuff to let other people find or in the edge of their yard by their sidewalk, um, they'll put like uh, some sort of picture or little made up name of like their family on the back so that, you know, you can find them all over the place and it'll be like, oh, hey, I picked up so-and-so's rock and, you know, some of our friends have done it and we've picked up their rocks and it's really cool because you're like, oh my gosh, you know, our friend painted that rock. So. Sydney says that um, they're going to use their rocks as paperweights. Oh, I like that idea. And Mary's wanting to know what coating do you use if you're going to put the rock outside? Is there, do you seal it in any way? So there's lots of sealers. I won't pretend to be an expert on all the sealers that are best. I'm sure there's probably people out there in our chat that knows some really good ones. But the one I like to use is Mod Podge makes one that's kind of like a, a, a I can't remember the name of, of the container uh, that the container has on it, but it's the, it's the version of Mod Podge that doesn't wash off. It's like a it's for, it's like an all-purpose or an outdoor, I can't remember off the top of my head the name of it, but you can use that or they make spray-on sealers, but um, just make sure guys if you're sealing your rock and um, stuff that you're doing them outside and you're getting an adult to help. All right, so I'm putting my little vine curls on here. This is quite delicate. Actually, I think I'm going to move to a smaller brush. Some of this stuff, you really, if you, if you want it to get detailed, you really have to use a tiny little brush. This one's pretty small. But if you're doing a big rock, you don't have to use a super small brush. Just depends on what size you have.
I want it to have color on the back. Oh, yeah? See? Oh, I like that. All right, so you can see the little little vine curl, and I've got the stem here, and then yeah, my pumpkin. Yeah, done. are you done? You want to go wash your hands? Yeah. All right. I'm going to go wash my board. Okay, go wash your hands. Thank okay. you. All right. All right, so I'm going to set my pumpkin aside. I'm going to let it dry a little bit longer and before I put a new coat on orange. And I'm going to move back to my fall tree. Man, this turned out to be a pretty good scary monster she did here. It's pretty awesome. I like it. All right. So for my fall tree, I'm going to pick, um, let's see, I've got orange out. I know leaves will turn kind of red, they'll turn kind of yellow. Um, you can always mix colors to get what you're looking for too, you know, to get like a golden color. So I'm just going to take a few different fall colors here. And make my leaves. So again, for the leaves, since this is really kind of a small tree, I'm going to use a really thin brush so that I make sure that those leaves stay small. So you can kind of see the brush size, pretty small. And I've got another, if I need to get even smaller, I've got a little tiny brush here. Zach said these would be cool with glow in the dark paint. Oh yes, absolutely. Well in the dark paint, glitter. Um, you could do like a puff paint. All right, so I'm just mixing a little bit of red in with my orange to get like a darker orange so that it's not, you know, traffic cone orange here. And I'm just gonna put a few spots on the tree because this tree has some leaves still on it. And then there's going to be some leaves on the ground. So just making some leaves on the tree. All right. And another cool thing you could do with these are, you know, Halloween's coming up. Thanksgiving is coming up. You can put them out front so that as people come up to visit or whatever, um, they can see these cool rocks you've done. And you can always share them if you guys want to put them, post them. You can share them. Hashtag make it with Michaels and then all your friends can see. It's another fun thing we like to do with them. All right, so I've put some orange on the tree and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing down here on the ground. So this is representing our, our leaves that have fallen off the tree and they're laying down here on the ground. And I'm going to do lots of different colors here so it looks kind of sparse right now. It's like man it's not a lot of leaves. All right, okay, clean that brush real good. All right, and then next I'm gonna do my yellow. And I'm gonna take just the tiniest amount of brown and mix with that yellow just to make it a little bit darker. I'm going for like a golden color. Almost like a yellow ochre, which unfortunately they don't really make a yellow ochre in kids paint. But when you're an art mom, you teach your kids young. We're learning color theory this year. All right, so just putting in the gold. Now you can start to see, so small. There we go. You can see the different colors. I'm just gonna put some on the ground. I'm gonna put some up in the tree. All 
And the idea is that you arrange them, you start to arrange them so that it, it, it looks like the leaves are gonna cover the ground. So the idea is when you get done, the leaves are laying around and you can see the contour of the ground because the leaves are there. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna do some dark green. So to do dark green, you can add, you can do a couple of different things. You can add a little bit of red to the green because green is a mix of yellow and blue. Adding red to it is gonna give it a brownish quality. So you can either add red to it or you can just add brown to it and it'll give it a little bit darker color. So see, I can take my bright green and I can make a dark green by adding either red or brown. Because again, you don't want it to look like you've got limes in your tree not quite fall looking. Okay, and just speckling those in, just like I did the others. And you can always go back and add more. And just keep going through your colors. I just wanted to do a few examples of all the different fall colors so you'd know how to mix them. And you can even oh. um, do it. How, how long should they wait in between coats? So like how yeah. long does it take for it to dry? <laughs> That's like saying how many coats should I put on? Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, it, it really has a lot to do with the type of paint you're using and how thick you put it on. So for example, I'm using Creatology paint and I have waited about five minutes on this pumpkin, it's been about five minutes. And I would say that the edges have started to dry. So you can still see it's a little glossy. Um, so I think if you put a, a pretty thin coat on, it'll dry in about five minutes. I did a thicker coat, which is why it's taking a little bit longer. It may take 10 or 15 minutes. If you're using like this Craft Smart paint, um, I did some of the base paint in Craft Smart um, and it took maybe 20 minutes for it to dry fully. Now it'll tack up. So as long as you're not touching it, you can actually go in and keep painting, uh, even though the rock is a little bit wet, as long as you're not touching it. So if you're just trying to get it dry enough that you can paint on top of it, that takes a little less time than if you're trying to get it dry enough to handle. So I wouldn't try to handle it too soon or else you might end up smudging it kind of like I did my ghost earlier. And they want to know where in Michaels can they find rocks? So most of the rocks can be found in the floral and floral accessories section. And it's been my experience that not all stores carry all the different types of rocks. So some stores will carry the black ones and the natural color, and then other stores will only carry the natural color. So if, or you know what, right now, like everybody's crafting crazy. And so some stores are just out, you know, they're, they're just people have purchased everything. So if you're having trouble finding the color that you want, um, you can do what I did. Like a lot of these were a natural color and because they were fall and Halloween, I wanted them to be a little darker. So I just painted them. Um, so, but floral, floral accessories is the best place to find them or in nature. Like, I mean, there's, um, you know, you can go to any kind of gardening store or store that sells gardening and landscaping materials and you can find rocks, you can pick up rocks, you know, on the ground. Um, I actually, this summer, I needed some rocks and the Michaels was out and I went to my friend and I was like, hey, you have a nice little rock area by your fire pit. Can I, can I steal like 10 of your rocks? And, and she let me, so um, yeah, just any, any place you can pick them up. Sydney said she found some in her backyard. Yep. Or his backyard, I don't know. But yeah, I, I think that's a great place to start looking. Yes, those are free. 
<laughs> but yeah, if you're, if you're in a Michaels, they're going to be located with the floral stuff. Um, and if you're looking somewhere else, they're usually with like the lawn, uh, like the lawn and gardening area. All right, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do kind of like a purpley, uh, not not purple as in, you know, royal purple or anything, but kind of like a a maroon, a dark purpley color. Which let's see, blue and red make purple. Vincent is making a spider. I like that. And Karina said her grandma got her some rocks. Oh, there you go. And Tanya got their rocks from a kit. Yes, some kits, some of the rock painting kits actually come with um, the rocks in it. So like your first 10 rocks, you can get straight out of the box. All right, so I'm just mixing my red and my blue. I'm getting kind of this dark maroony color here because I know some trees get that color leaf in the fall. It just gives a little dimension to your tree. So like I said, you could, I mean, man, you could paint little dots on this thing all day. Um, but the general idea is you're putting a few of the leaves in the tree and you're going to put a bunch of them on the ground so you can it looks like the tree and you can just keep going in and layering those leaves on the ground until you get it to look the way you want it to and it looks like my, my pumpkin is getting really close to drying. So we'll go back to the pumpkin in just a minute. What are some other things you guys are painting? Christina made her own rocks. What? I think from clay. That's awesome. That's some crafty business there. Mm-hmm. Yosef is making a fall tree. Okay. Oh, what a grave. Jessica is painting a rainbow with sparkles. What? That's awesome. Rainbow is, is making a llama. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this a festive llama? Or is this just an everyday llama? I don't know. I'll have to find out. All right, so looking at mine, I, I'm deficient a little bit in the yellow or the gold. So I'm gonna go back in and add just a little bit more gold before we go back to the pumpkin. And you can go online and find other um, pictures of fall rocks to inspire you. Um, you know, the, our website where you can click on the project has a few examples. Um, you know, you can, you can use anything as your example, really. Like you can just think about the things that you love. And I know a lot of people do rocks around Thanksgiving. Um, we do them, they're, they're thankful rocks. And uh, we like to, you know, put on their pictures for the kids that we let them draw pictures, but some of the adults that think that they can't paint, they like to just write words on there and we put things that we're thankful for on those. And those are a lot of fun. It's a fun little activity to do together with our family. Some people are saying you can find some great rocks if you have a river or a creek nearby, definitely with a parent. Oh yes, absolutely. Those are the best. All right, so you can kind of see, there we go, that's the right way. You can see my tree, it's got some leaves in it, but it's looking kind of sparse. Most of them have fallen down to the ground. And this one will dry pretty, pretty fast because this is just little colored dots on here. So nothing too thick to worry about. Not like my, not like my pumpkin, which is almost dry now. It's dry enough I can give it another coat. 
which is all I care about. All right, so I'm going to okay. use, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I wonder what Jacob and Kason are painting. I don't know. What are they painting? Oh. Pumpkins and. Is that a ghost? Oh my gosh. I you love it. Great. I love those. Oh, there's another pumpkin. What do we, is that a Frankenstein? Oh, I can't see. <laughs> I can see green. Tell her you're fixing to do a landscape. All right. I'm fixing landscape for pumpkins on this. Oh, okay. It's a forest. I love it. Those are really good, guys. This this is a crow day and a human. Okay. Kind of like a day cycle. Uh-huh. I like those. Man, you guys have painted a lot. I got like two done and you guys have like 10. It's probably everybody else. I go really fine. And a field full of sheep. Oh, I like that. Man, you guys are getting elaborate with yours. Very cool. All right, so I'm just putting my, so this is my third coat here on the pumpkin part. And you can see it's covering up the black really, really well now. So for those of you who got the Crayola paint or the Creatology paint, that's probably for a light color like this, the orange going over a dark color, which I had painted this one black. Um, so it looks like three coats gets a really good look. Now, if you're doing a dark color on a light background, you might not need three coats. You might be able to do it in two coats. But I'm also putting my coats on pretty thick. Um, like I said, it takes longer to dry, but you have to do fewer coats. So it's just up to you. If you'd rather put more on and them dry quickly, it's up to you. So let's try it like this. All right. So while it's a little wet, I'm going to drop in a few little brown lines to make the ridges on the pumpkin. So you know how the pumpkin will have these little ridges down them. That's what okay. I'm on next. We have a retired teacher with us today. Ooh, welcome. And they, so yeah, and they said they have miniature garden veggies and garden tools and they want to glue some of their rocks to them. Is that a okay. good idea? Yes or no? So, clarifying question. Are we gluing the little items to the rock? So they're small enough that they would go on the rock as like part of the scene? Because if that's what you're doing, I would say that would be pretty cool. Uh, I'm trying to think of what kind of glue you would want to use for that. Something that can, something that can work with porous items. So that's, that's going to exceed what Elmer's would probably be good at. I wouldn't use a, a glue like that. I would use something that's a little thicker. Um, one of the industrial ones? Silicone base or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right, so I'm gonna put, I'm gonna take a small brush here and do my lines. Oh, so Kristen says that Aubrey is painting her best friend and going to hide the rock for her. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, somebody suggested hot glue. That, you could use hot glue. 
for the gluing the little items onto the rock? All right, so I'm just, see, I'm just making the little lines in the pumpkin while it's wet. This is just the little ridges of the pumpkin that you see. Sophia is asking if they can blend. Blend paint. colors? Paint color Absolutely. Paint. I'm a big fan of blending colors. That's where your color theory comes in. You can get a lot done with three or four colors. If you have the primary colors. There is not a lot you can't paint if you've got red, yellow, and blue. Kenzie wants to know if they can use pom-poms. Oh yeah. Pom-poms, googly eyes, beads, glitter, all those good crafty things. All right, I think I'm gonna stop with that actually. That looks pretty good. All right, so you can see it's still wet. You can still see the shine of the paint worked really well to put the brown paint in while it was still wet. You just have to be really careful. And then it gave really good lines on that pumpkin. All right. And I'm going to go back in and lay a couple more colors into my tree. I think next time I'm going to pick a lighter background for this tree. I feel like the fall colors didn't pop as well on the black rock as it did, or as it would have on a lighter colored rock. So you live and learn. You can also paint backgrounds to things. So if I had wanted to, um, you, I could have made like a little green area down at the bottom and then like a blue, a light blue sky and then painted my tree on top of it. Um, you know, you can do like a sunset picture. Um, any kind of background if you don't want to just paint straight onto the rock. Especially if you're doing something like a tree or a house or a graveyard or, you know, something that usually has a, a tether to the earth. All right. Marisa would like to know if they fade, even if you seal them. Um, it has been my experience that most paints will fade some, but again, the more concentrated paints like this, the thicker, like the more dense the pigment within the paint, you get a couple of things. You get fewer applications to, to you know, fewer coats um, on the rock, and you get better color fastness with that type of paint. Um, by nature, a kid's paint just doesn't usually have that kind of pigment density. I mean, for one thing, you really don't want it to because you're, you're hoping that if your kid gets this everywhere, you can easily wash it off. So it, it's, it's a trade-off. It just depends. Like, you know, if your kid's doing this and you want to, you want an easy cleanup, I would, I would lean more toward these paints. Um, but if you're helping them and uh, they can handle, you know, uh, a paint that's not meant for little kids, then you can go with the Craft Smart or the Americana, and you'll get better um, you'll be, you'll get better color fastness and fewer coats. So Diane said, if anybody's having problems making lines on their rock, they can use a chopstick to guide their paintbrush. Oh yes, that's a that's an old art technique. So yeah, if you don't want to. If you need something to steady your hand, you can lay your hand on something like a chopstick or um, painters in the Renaissance used to have a pull, like a long stick and they would set it on the edge of their canvas and then they would rest their hand across it so that it would keep their hand out of their paint and keep their brush really steady. That's a very good tip. Man, our audience knows a lot of art stuff. This is impressive. And it wants to know if you can make something that's purple. Can I make something that's purple, like a purple spider? Maybe. And uh, Steph would like to see 
um, some close-ups of your daughter's rocks. Oh yeah. These rocks. So we have the football, which is almost dry now, which I'm impressed. Like this girl does not watch football. So <laughs> she knew what a football looked like that to me, like this is a pretty good rendition of a football for a, for a little one that doesn't watch football. And then this is the, this is the crazy monster with his brain. So th these are his teeth and then his eyes and then this pink stuff. Apparently he has pink. He's a scary one. And then this is one she painted earlier. This is Barb from the Trolls movie. You can see her big ears and her red hair. And you kind of lose her mouth, but you get the nose here in the middle. And then this was going to be the spider, but I think she abandoned ship on this one. The, the, the pink paint wasn't laying against the black rock as well as she had hoped. Ah. I may have to revive that one. <laughs> this is where you got to go really thick and lots of coats. So like really put the coat on there. I'm just going to make a round round for the spider. And then you're going to have to let it dry for like, you know, 20 minutes probably, as thick as I did that. So they want to know, um, are you supposed to paint the whole rock or just the top when you're painting the base coat? Oh man, okay, so this is a preference, guys. This is something that is up to you. I mean, there are people that like to paint the whole thing. Um, actually, let me see if I can find, now it's not gonna be, uh, it's not going to be fall themed. But let me see if I can find one. So I did, a, we did some emojis a few weeks ago, or maybe a little bit longer than that. So see, here's my googly eyes that I used, but I did the whole thing. So this one, if you picked it up in a part, like the whole thing's covered um, in paint. And that takes a while because you have to paint it and let it fully dry. So you can't cheat like I did earlier and paint into wet paint. You have to let the the paint fully dry, flip it over and paint it. Fully dry, flip it over and paint it. And this one took about two or three coats because it's a yellow paint. So it was a really light paint. You can see through th those easier. Um, my frog took probably two coats, but he went a lot faster because I didn't paint his belly. So you can see a little speckled rock. So again, it just depends. I mean, you could even do like a different color for a frog. You could paint like a light green belly so that when you flip it over, it's like, oh, look, he's got a light green belly. And you can put, you know, your, your name or your family code name or a fun little picture that represents you so that whoever finds it, um, you know, knows it's you if you want them to. And then this one, I didn't even paint the rock. So the rock color is like this pinky color. It, it was really beautiful. And I just painted the picture straight onto the rock. So I didn't do anything to, to you know, coat this one ahead of time, uh, which is, so like this one, this rock is just black. Like I didn't do anything to it either. This was the color the rock came for my ghost. So I just, this was perfect because it was already dark color and I just went straight in with the white and it took three coats of the white and I was using like a, I was using like a CraftSmart paint for that one. So um, that tells you how many coats it takes when you use a really light color on a really dark color. Um, and then this is a cool one. I, somebody mentioned glow in the dark paint. So this is a, a, a base paint. And then this, I don't know if you can see the texture of it. This is like a, the stands off against the rock. It's actually like a three-dimensional paint that glows in the dark. And again, I know those aren't full. These are just some rocks that, you know, we've painted in past classes that I had laying around. I've got some questions about rocks. I'm not sure if they're for this class or from a previous one. But someone is asking uh, the flamingo rock, did you use paint pens? Uh, Flamingo rock. I, or she's talking about your mouse. I'm not sure. Oh, <laughs> are you talking about this? <laughs> this is my mouse. 
I didn't use anything. I just bought it. <laughs> and then um, someone asked about a close-up and guidance on how to paint the rock with peppers. Say that one more time. A close-up and guidance on how to paint the rock with peppers. I'm not sure if this is from a previous class or from this class, though. So. How to paint. So are we painting yeah. a rock with a pepper on it? Or? I think so. Uh, I don't know that I did. Or maybe it's the pumpkin. Oh, the pumpkin? Yes. The pumpkin I can show again. So I think any closer and it might just blur, but... Yep. You can see the lines really well because I went in with those while it was wet and I just did brown for the stem and a green for the little curl. And then that's just pretty much a straight out of the bag orange. So your regular Creatology orange. I didn't mix it with anything because I wanted the pumpkin to really be bright. Um, you know, again, if you're super uh, fancy and competitive on your, your realistic looking painting of a, a pumpkin on a rock, uh, I, would, I would say you can go in with like some reds and make some darker oranges and really, you know, do a, do a fancy pumpkin. Um, but this one, I just used the straight orange. All right, any last questions? Looks like we're almost out of time. This was fun. I'm glad, this, get, this got me into the, the fall spirit. I really, uh, fall is like my favorite season anyway, so any excuse to think about or pretend like it's fall, uh, I'm down with. They had a great time. Uh, it, it was your mouse that they were talking about. There. Oh, my mouse. Okay. Fire, fire mouse. <laughs> Which, hey, well, if they want to paint flamingos, go for it. Yep. Uh, hey, if you want to DIY your mouse, more power to you. I think I'll stick with painting rocks for now. All right. Well, I think we're no good. Other questions? Thanks again, guys, for joining us. I hope you had a good time. Um, I've already lost Zoe. She's wandered off and found something else to do. But um, we appreciate you joining us. And we hope you will join us next time. And Jacob and Kaysen, I'll see you later. OK, guys? Thanks for joining us today. Bye. Thank you.